All right, we are live now. Hey, folks, I have a couple of things that I have to do in order to get everything up to speed so that I can start my program today, the Create and Engage Quadcast and TriCast. Today, I have Lindsay Margolis with me, otherwise known as Pinky with three eyes on Snapchat. Uh, so in the meantime, while I get things going, it'll take me about 30 seconds. If you want, please share this video. If you're on Periscope, please share or retweet. If you're on Facebook, please share. If you're on YouTube, if there, I can't remember if there's a way to share on YouTube or not, but please do. Um, I can monitor comments on Facebook and Periscope, but not on YouTube. Oh, I also can on Instagram Live, but that's one thing I've got to get going here in just a moment. I have not gotten that going yet. So bear with me for just a moment while I get a couple things going and we will uh, start the show. Welcome whoever has showed up on Facebook. Hopefully uh, my broadcast won't remain interrupted. It's saying interrupted right now, but um, we'll see what happens in a minute. In fact, I wonder if I'm going to have a weak connection today. Folks, one of the things when you try to go do a quadcast, you've got four channels to keep track of. I'm doing Instagram, Periscope. Facebook and YouTube. So it's a lot. Um, so bear with me just a moment. Let me make sure everything is going good. I think it is. Okay, so this is also a podcast within the quadcast. When I had uh, my friend Chris Streb on the other day, I was having some equipment problems and I couldn't do my typical podcast opening. So I'm going to do that right now uh, in addition as I introduce uh, Lindsay. But again, Lindsay Margolis, uh, she is uh, very big on Snapchat. Um, as well as other platforms, but Snapchat is her calling. And again, her screen name is Pinky. Pinky, P-I-I-I, -I P-I-I-I-N-K-Y. -I -I um, <clears throat> so let me get things going for the podcast, and I will bring Lindsay in. Welcome, folks. This is Todd Bergen. This is the Create and Engage podcast with Todd.Live and Quadcast. If you're listening to this and watching it live on the social media channels that we broadcast to. Today, my guest is Lindsay Margolis. Otherwise known as Pinky on Snapchat. That's Pinky with three eyes. Again, this is a podcast and a live video quadcast. It is June 8th, 2017. It is a live video. I'm broadcasting from Irvine, California to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Periscope. And I'm recording it for my podcast, the Create and Engage podcast, which will be online very soon. And if you would like, please, if you're on Facebook, of course, you won't hear me saying this. If you're on Facebook, you can see it. Tap the screen. I have a graphic that lets people know to tap the screen. Please leave comments. I do monitor Instagram, Periscope, and Facebook. I cannot monitor YouTube. Sorry, YouTube crowd. I can't do them all at once. That's coming soon. Please share. If you share this video, please retweet it on Periscope. Re, uh, share it on Facebook. If YouTube has sharing functionality, and quite honestly, I don't know if it does, please be kind enough to share. Sharing is caring. And again, my guest today, and I'm going to bring her on in just a second, Lindsay Margolis, otherwise known as Pinky on Snapchat. She was on a podcast of mine back in, I think it was 2016, the Divorce the Workforce podcast, and we talked a lot about Snapchat. Snapchat's still a big, uh, something that people will talk about constantly, um, and unfortunately in a lot of tired ways. Um, the Snapchat versus Instagram debate is constant, and um, you know, Lindsay is a firm believer in Snapchat. She's going to tell us about why that argument is ridiculous and her thoughts on that as well. So I'm going to bring her in right now. Lindsay, how are you doing today? Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm so happy to have you. It's been uh, a long time since we talked and uh, a lot's gone on 
in the social media world. So for to open it up, tell the folks who don't know you already what you do on Snapchat and what you do on social media today in 2017. I basically create uh, fun and engaging stories on Snapchat. Um, and I guess what I do is I just kind of, I love talking to people and I like helping people. Um, that's, you know, mostly what I do. I also help brands who don't, I mean, it's recently come to my attention that um, brands don't necessarily want to hire, quote, influencers in the sense of the word influencer, the real sense. Um, You know, they don't want to pay money to have someone represent them. So instead, I have recently also started helping them, you know, become their own influencer, uh, breaking out of their shell and being entertaining and getting people's attention. So that's pretty fun. So who do you work with in doing that? Myself. No, but I mean, what? It's my own. What Sorry. what brands have you worked I just, with? Um, none yet. I just started promoting that. Like, I just figured out that like that's what I want to do because I do want to help people. So, um, it's a thing that I that I just figured out that I'm starting. So, <clears throat> when did um, more represented brands um, on Snapchat? So, when did you get started on Snapchat? About a year and a half ago. Is like I made my stuff public about a year and a half ago. Did you, um, were you an immediate, of- were you an immediate hit with your content? Because I know you've got a huge audience on Snapchat and that's something that a, it's a, not an easy thing to do. And you've been able to do that. You have a very loyal following. You have huge uh, viewership on your snaps. Um, did that happen overnight or did you have to study no. or, and, and figure this out? You know, how, what was no. your stick? The biggest thing in the world is that um, it takes time. <laughs> it really does. And that and that goes for every every platform that you want to grow a following in. Um, you really just got to keep building your audience with good content. Um, there's, you know, the newest fun thing, which is not really fun on Snapchat, is all the spam we're getting. You know, add this guy for instant 10K followers. First of all, like, I did a whole story on how that doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know why people think it does. Um, people people want instant followings and, you know, you're not putting out content. No one's going to follow you. You're going to lose all those followers. It takes time. You also have to, you know, engage with your audience to keep them. Absolutely. Now, as far as create, so I want to take, take this down in two different directions. First of all, I want to talk about the content that you create and how you go about creating it, how you decide what to create and why, why it works. And then, you know, of course the engagement side of it. So let's start with the creation. So when you were starting to build your audience, what did you notice that you were able to create that really brought them in? I mean, what was the trick? What was, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of them. I'm sure it's not just one secret formula, but what really worked for you out of the gate? Humor. A lot of humor. Humor. Um, I'm now known for my pinky rants. Um, I rant about everyday things that, you know, like I literally, I literally just sit there and like, I can just bitch about something that like happened and just like the world can relate to that. Cause it's, whether it's like a huge deal, it could be about politics, it could be about anything, or it could be my most recent spontaneous rant was that like a green light was so quick. I couldn't even go through it, but the red light was like five hours long. People love that because they can relate, but you know, they don't always think to, say it. <laughs> well, when you talk um, about, when you talk about controversial issues and you're looking at the minutia of the day, it's huge. It's great content. And Larry David did that with Curb Your Enthusiasm. I don't know if you've seen that show, but all these little interactions that he would have or things that would go on in his life became, you know, 30 minute episodes. It's kind of, he wrote Seinfeld too. So that kind yeah. of was the same way, but Curb Your Enthusiasm was on HBO, so they were allowed to drop F-bombs and talk about things that they couldn't talk about on Seinfeld. But it sounds to me that that's what you do. You notice these little things like um, it could be something like a, a, a transaction at the checkout. Like, let me give you one. I, it happened to me. Let me see if this would make good content for Pinky. Have you ever gone to the grocery store and instead of unloading, you know, the hand basket, instead of getting the cart, you get the hand basket? Instead of unloading the handbasket, you just set the handbasket on the rail and it, and it goes down and the person has to unload it. They, you always get a dirty look. Would that be good content for Pinky? That would work perfectly. 
like the like the belt instead of like you unloading it for them yes like yeah totally you set it there you, and you know, put a no, separator <laughs> you can even put a separator on both sides of the basket but you let the basket scroll down to the cashier and then they they always give you a dirty look like why didn't you unload that yeah, I've exactly. actually done Why that. Why didn't you unload that? It's like, that's actually not their job. But like, here we are pretending that they have to, it's a, like, I could go with both perspectives on that, you know? There you go. Um, I just gave you some content. Group them separately and they probably want to take a pineapple and throw it at your face now. Like, that's what I would want to do. Cause like, really? You can't, like, you're watching me do this. Like, who are you? Kind of thing. Like I, yeah. Stupid stuff like that. You could, but you, I also go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying I also have, um, I also have this awesome, audience especially on snapchat where i can even talk about like things like donald trump no matter if you're a supporter or or a non-supporter or whatever i've had conversations with um you know i'm just gonna i'm personally not a trump supporter but i've had conversations with people who are and we actually ended up not hating each other and they're still my follower like i there's i can go both ways on it too so like humor and um just the respect that you know, people get from being able to relate and then also being able to like instantly switch when someone's like, Hey Pinky, I really need advice. My boyfriend broke up with me or Hey Pinky, someone just committed suicide. Like they trust me enough from my stories that they, they really just need advice to like talk and stuff. And that's where your audience grows. Uh, back to your original question. That's how you honestly grow an audience. You, you care about them. Absolutely. And you create the content. I mean, those are the two things. I mean, you can try your shout outs and stuff like that, but it's not going to work. Like, so you use a lot of humor. Do you do anything like off of Snapchat and import it into Snapchat? Like, I think there's creators out there that use things like, uh, Premiere Pro or Final Cut or, um, uh, you know, one of the video editing software, you know, on their computer and they're able to do things like, you know, I, I've seen somebody, it might've even been Joe Wilson. I wonder, I've always wondered how he did it, but he'll have like screenshots of 150 different people and they scroll really fast and they're fun and they're cool. But I don't know how you would do that without taking it and putting it in some sort of an editor and then recording it. But uh, do you do anything along those lines? Any tricks outside of Snapchat chat that you bring in? Yeah, I actually um, think Joe Wilson, I think actually everything mostly that he does is live. Um, but I do know like uh, when M Flacco does his movie remakes, you would have to edit that together um, stuff like that. Um, it honestly, like my life depends on my mood. I can be completely spontaneous and I can just, you know, just, you know, talk to people, rant or draw or whatever. Or, um, I mean, I don't, I don't go as far as like final cut pro and then upload or anything like that. But like, if I think a rant's just going to be funnier and that, and yeah, I'll cut it down and all. Yeah. And I'll upload it every once in a while. Well, some of the artists, there's I mean, their, their stuff is so good. And I don't, I mean, it just, I, I'm, I always, I'm always trying to figure out how people do things on Snapchat because it's not an easy platform to create awesome content. Um, it, that's different than everyone else's. Uh, that's the thing. And that's why, I, you know, I know there's people that do things outside and, uh, I don't have it. I hell, I, I don't care if people do things outside. I think if they can make their videos better than more power to you and whether you're doing it on Snapchat or Instagram, whatever. Um, but there's definitely tricks to do it. Like Sean Duras. I mean, there's, there's things that he's done where there's jump cuts that you can't pause the video while you're recording and then zoom in and then unpause it and, and you get that jump cut where you're like, you know, I've seen it where he's taken it from three distances. Like, I remember he did this. Phone. Pardon? It's a jailbroken phone. It's just a jailbroken phone. They allow you to upload things. Ah, uh, got it. I don't um, have a not, to, not to burst everyone's secret bubble here, but um, I think mostly... You know what? I don't. I don't know if everyone knows, but I think a lot of people know. Um, it's a jail, jailbreak, jailbreak that lets you do that. Um, we're not going to be able to do that for much longer because the guy who I adored so so much decided that he's going to stop, you know, doing the coding for it because people were being mean to him, which I think is ridiculous of the people being mean to him. But that that was a way. That was how we did it. Interesting. It's not as. It's actually not as interesting as. <laughs> So but how it much, does make for a better story. So. How, how much content do you create each day? I mean, are um, you, I mean, do you have an hour's worth of content that you throw up each day, or is it you know five minutes? I've never really thought about it in terms of time. I mean, like um, there are people who go for twenty four hours, which is updating, like blogging, like you know. My stories kind of tend to have like a beginning, middle, and an end, which is what I personally think 
makes a good story, whether you're vlogging or not. Um, you got to have a point to it, a beginning, a middle, an end, and, like, this is the thing that's happening, and then you move on. Um, usually I'll, I'll do, like, one a day, like, one Snapchat thing a day. Right. It could – my my stories that I put together are no longer than two minutes max. But I will sit there and uh, continue to talk to all the people that respond to it. Right. And if there's something that, like, I can post that someone says that's funny and then go off of that, I'll do that. But my original, you know, stories, it's, like, I think two minutes is a long time. If it's not a vlog, because I'm not, I'm not a huge vlogger. Um, I'm, I think two minutes is the, you know, max that people are gonna end up paying attention to you. I mean, unless you're like Joe Santagato on YouTube, but interesting. I mean, it's not. It depends on how you do your stories. So, um, aside from humor, do you? I mean, do you take on serious subjects too, or do you? Do you give? Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> I yeah. can. I, it's weird. Most people can't. Well, I, you know, it's arguable if Trump's a serious story or not. So that's why, I, you know, I like, you know, the, your dog, <laughs> like if your dog died, would you would you talk about your dog dying or would you leave like personal family, you know, other kind of thing out and just stick with the fun stuff and maybe not? Well, part of being relatable is actually bringing in your real life. Um, I think maybe the way that I say things um, has like a hint. It's the sarcasm that like makes it you know, a hint of humor or whatever. But, like, if my cat died, I mean, there's no reason why I should hide that, um, you know, from people because there can be so many people that can relate. Maybe some, like, one of my million followers, one of them had to have had a pet that died, you know? Like, sure. I've gotten a lot of random thank you for this story so much on, like, the most unexpected stories in the world where, yeah, so, I mean, not with, like, everything, but. So you have a fan on that's watching on Facebook, if he's still with us, Eddie Kidd. Do you know Eddie Kidd? I do know Eddie Kid. Eddie Kid, he says Pinky's humor and Snapchat art is what made me follow her. Her interaction and relatability is what kept me following for the past two years. And you've pretty much talked about that. You've talked about the interaction. You've talked about it being relatable. Um, and he's been following for the past two years. That's that's fabulous. You probably have a lot more like Eddie Kid, who would echo his sentiments um, entirely. There are there are people's names that I do recognize from like a year and a half to two years ago, like. I think a year and a half is when I really just started to go at it. And I was just like, oh, my God, these people actually, like, don't hate me. Like, they're real people. As soon as I said to myself, like, wow, these are real people, like, it hit me. I was just like, oh, man, this is what I want yeah, to do. Who, I want to talk who, to the real people. Who would but hate you? Recognize. You're fun. You're fun. You you get on and you have fun. You laugh. Sometimes you're having a you beer. Be yourself. The best way to be creative is to just be yourself because everybody is a different self, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, in engagement, I mean, do you get a lot of, I mean, I, I feel like this is a dumb question. I think that you do, but I'm just going to ask it. I mean, do you get a lot of, like, if you put out a story, do you get 50, 60 people giving you feedback? I mean, is it, I mean, cause I, I don't see that. So I figure you do, <coughs> excuse me. I figure a lot of the, the bigger Snapchat celebrities do get tons of interaction. Tons. Yeah. And that's the point of it to the point where like, Snapchat only shows you about 30 to 40 and then it cuts it off and then you won't see the rest, you know? Um, so we got to constantly explain, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to not answer you and stuff like that. But um, yeah, totally. Um, if no one responded to my stories or cared or then my views dropped, I mean, I'd think about what I was doing. <laughs> so you have another, right. another uh, follower that, uh, or friend that showed up. I love Pinky so much. She's really funny and her stories are so inspiring. She seems like a nice person, and I really love her. That's huge. And her name is Hannah Foster. Hi, Anna. Um, I don't think that I know you, but that just made my whole day. Like I can go to sleep now, like that. <laughs> she it's loves things you. Things like that that keeps going. Well, you know, that's just it. I, I mean, I look at I, I, I'm not even anywhere near on Snapchat what you are on Snapchat, but I have a, you know, I've got probably. 20 or so people that watch everything that I put out and comment and respond. It makes me feel so good. It, it's awesome. Like, doesn't that, yeah. It's the thing that keeps me going. Like they're the reason I do anything on social media. Like without, like I don't do it for brands. I don't do it for even like money. I do it for them because like it makes me feel good to make them feel good. And it's like one of those things. Where it just well, it is fun. <laughs> and you develop relationships. Like I said, I have like 20 or so and you know, I can, I can count on them to watch almost everything, if not everything. Uh, they don't always respond, but when they do, it always packs a punch. It's always something really good and relevant, and it's fun. Um, and I agree with you, but you're just doing it on a massive scale. So what, you know, your message really with the humor 
and the relatability. Um, I think we all try to be relatable, whether it's, you know, no matter what the subject matter is. But I think the humor, you, you've you nailed it with the humor. I mean, people are looking to be entertained. And I think Snapchat, the Snapchat audience is less about buying stuff and it's more about just having fun and being entertained and connecting with people. Yeah, and I think people need to, I mean, I think the marketer side need to get, you know, off our asses about how Snapchat just sucks now, blah, blah, blah. Because you know what? Like the people that you can't reach are the people who don't want to buy things. They want to be enter- entertained. They want to like have a platform that their parents aren't on, you know, like their parents are on Facebook. Like It's their platform that they can just watch who they want and they can actually talk to the person. And um, I mean, not it's <laughs> hashtag not all marketers, but you know, like it's, it's really hard actually. And um, it's to like tell these like marketers that when you compare Snapchat or any other platform, you know, it's like, it's not always about selling and like a product. It's more about just being who you are and people relating to you because sometimes that's better than trying to sell something. Now there are people but on Snapchat that are selling, it, right? Better be damn creative about it. That's, there, there are people on Snapchat that are selling. I mean, I've heard that, and I don't know this for sure. I just hear, I see articles, I hear things, I see social media, but, you know, I'll just throw one out there. I don't know what his deals are, but like Shonduras. I, I, I've been under the impression that Shonduras gets, has deals with like cereal, because cereal's in everything he does. I mean, if he's not skateboarding I, through a box of cereal. I think cereal's just his thing, but yeah, he does get sponsored a lot. He does, because he's a face that people relate to, that people like. He was one. He was like the first snap. That he's the first person that everyone that I like went. Wow, look, I can draw on this. Like, wow, look what I can do. Like that kind of thing. So he's like the biggest. You know what I mean? Um, so a lot of brands are going to go to him, and that's that's what I was talking about before about hiring an influencer. Um, a lot of brands don't want to do that. Like I want to push small businesses to Snapchat. And they're afraid to do it because they they don't know what they're doing on it. And I'm trying to look at them and be like, that's totally fine. Like, and if you don't want to like pay like eight thousand dollars for like a story and try and get in touch with like and Flacco and you know, because like we go through Del Mundo um, agency, you know what I mean? Like it's hard like that. Like connect with an influencer um, that wants to help you be your own influencer type thing because there's not very many of us that have like the following that they want, you know, and there's no way in hell that I have my following matches like M Placos or Shonduras, but I have the engagement. And a lot of times I think that um, people are just so afraid. I think I went off here, but I do have a point. So afraid, like they're going to go for the number, like instead of the engagement. So it's just, it's, it's hard that um, small businesses are really, really super scared and don't think there's a point to Snapchat um, when it's actually mostly where their audience is other than, you know, Instagram. Well, it, it's a shame because all you do is, it, I mean, it's one, it's free and all you do is turn on your phone and it's like, let's say you have a store that sells uh, clothing or food. Uh, you got a mm-hmm. restaurant. I mean, little, little insights from your restaurant on a daily basis. Um, you know, if, if people find it, that's, that's the big problem. You know? What's that now? Like facts of the day, I think people are trying to sell a product too much on Facebook and inse- uh, Facebook, Snapchat instead of like represent who they are. So there is no target location like Instagram, like Boohoo. Okay. Well, instead of like bitching about it, let's be creative. How can you use Snapchat to promote your business without trying to slam a product in someone's face or be like, hey, come here? Well, no one in LA is going to come to your little mom and pop shop. Yes, I get that. But if you go on Snapchat and create cool stories, not selling anything, just representing yourself as a brand. Like, say you're a coffee shop. I can't go to L.A. I'm in Philly, you know? But if you're really interesting and, like, you're creative and you're funny or whatever it is, like, I'm still going to watch your stories. And I might even go to your Facebook page and check it out. Because, like, dude, if you can own it on Snapchat, you probably have really awesome, cool coffee pictures on Instagram. You know what I mean? Maybe you have some cool videos. Like, that's how brands need to think of it um, instead of, here um, is a promo code and, and here's right. a discount and the products and stuff. Like you can do teasers and you, if you just create good content um, to represent your brand and be real and authentic, you don't have to sell a product on Snapchat to be able to gain customers on other platforms from it. Like, I agree with sense? you. I, I, I agree with you completely. And the other thing is, is I think you can even take it further. Like 
you could be a good storyteller and you could tell creative stories that have nothing to do with selling. But on the other hand, you know, Snapchat, I think, would be great for something like, let's say you have a coffee shop and you've got a special blend you're running a certain week. And it's not a special or a coupon code or anything like that. It's just like, look at Coffee Fiends. This is the this is what we're pouring this week. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Come in and say hi. Um, or exactly. yeah, Do something entertaining. Don't just be like, look at our coffee of the week. Do something cool with coffee. Absolutely, coffee. absolutely. But you could you could find a way to tell that story where you're letting them know that that's what's. Or if you had a you know if you're a you know I, I'm a I'm a I'm a craft beer guy. So I always want to know what's pouring at the local mm -hmm. brew pub you know, what beers do they have that week? And if they could cleverly, you know, throw in, hey, we, you know, we've got Pliny the Elder this week and, you know, but they're, mm -hmm. but they're being clever with their story or maybe they're talking to customers. Maybe you got a guy there just, you know, you hand him the phone and say, hey, you know, talk to the crowd for a minute. Tell them what you're up to today. I mean, it could be a really cool way of connecting while letting people know that, hey, what's going on here this week or even today? Like if you come in here in the next 20 minutes, this is what you're going to find. This is exactly what Snapchat's for, especially when it comes to brands and businesses. That's that's exactly it. And I think so many people don't understand that, like, not everybody has the personality to be like, hey, what's up? Let me tell you about a thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Chris so Drub. Everybody has the artistic ability to do it, but somebody does, or somebody can kind of teach you how to put something together if you want to learn. Like, and it, these brands don't reach out to people for help or for someone to actually do it for them and pay them. That's their problem. That's their biggest problem because they're not cross promoting. Exactly. Snapchat be a fun, entertaining, build your following no matter where you are in the world. Like even if you're a mom and pop shop, you can make awesome stories and it will bring your audience to Snapchat, any audience, and then it will bring that audience to your platforms where you actually say, Hey, this is what this is like how much this is and this is whatever. And it all like everything just starts with being authentic and having fun and being creative and growing a following instead of like wishing it was gonna happen in two seconds, wishing it would be so much yeah. easier to like put a hashtag and it's clickable. You know what? Like life's not easy. There's a Get lot of, it. there's like, a lot of people that want that two seconds. Our buddy Chris Strub has joined us. He joined us on Facebook and then I saw him come into uh he went into Periscope, but um, he said, uh, what did he say? Oh, he said, you know, your beers. Um, uh, ha. I don't know how to even pronounce it. Youngling or Yangling or what? How do you? Yingling. Yingling. Oh, yeah. yeah, he 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 commented on that. So I get. I I think I've seen before where you and him have hung out. So he loves Yingling as much as I love the Dallas Cowboys. Ah, I'm okay. From... Inside joke. <laughs> um, but yeah. So you know, people, if they were using Snapchat correctly, now I have to ask you if um, do you? We got to go into the whole dreaded. Instagram, Snapchat, talk a little bit um, because I want you to diffuse what everyone talks about is one's killing the other, one's yeah. versus the other. I want you to address that, but I, you know, t before we address that, do you even use Instagram stories? Of course I do. do <laughs> Not you, as much as Snapchat, but I, I do. Do you have um, fun with it? Is there anything that you like about it or is it just you're do using it because it's there or do you truly like it? Like. I I don't have personally, if I don't have fun with something, um, I ain't going to use it. There's no point. Um, if I don't see the point in something, I'm not going to use it. Like right. Instagram is an awesome platform. Like they, they might've taken the stories idea, but it's used for something completely different than, you know, Snapchat stories. And, um, uh, most people don't even use Facebook stories and, <laughs> um, they're just two completely different platforms. It's such an empty, stupid debate. Like, you don't say, well, um, which one do you use more, YouTube or Facebook? Like, they're two different platforms. Like, what? why would you even, like, it has nothing to do with each other. You have to use platforms for what, you know, for what they are, um, not what you think they should be. And that argument was, is, is the most invalid thing I've ever. Well, people love it because it's it, it stokes debate. Like, I think that people on Facebook are constantly bringing it up because it gets a lot of comments and it boosts their you know, their post and everyone sees it and they look important and all that. But it is, in fact, out there. I mean, people love to talk about Instagram versus Snapchat and, oh, I'm leaving Snapchat now. And, oh, I, there, I've even seen people say, oh, I'm going back to Snapchat. That's the thing. Why are you leaving and going back? Why, why can't, like, everyone just get along? Like, all the platforms can exist if we just used all of them for, you know, our, the best use for ourselves and our audience. Like, 
there shouldn't be like, um, I like Instagram better than Snapchat. I'm leaving Snapchat. Like, why? If you don't like Snapchat, if you don't enjoy it, if it's not helping you in your life, you know, then don't use it. That's totally fine. But don't like neglect one because you think the other is going to sell more for you or because you think the other is just doing better because of some like analytical statistical article that you read. Like you're not you're not taking into consideration that most users on both platforms are not marketers. They are everyday users and they just want to look at cool things, you know. They, and they also have this thing called social media where they can actually reach out and connect to people and they see that and we want to help people. So now they want to be influencers too. I just think it could be like everybody can get along. <laughs> like I, 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 I agree. I mean, I, I like to use them both. I, I have to say that, and I, we talked about this before the show that <laughs> some things about Snapchat versus Instagram have really made Instagram an attractive platform in comparison to Snapchat. I, I started on Snapchat and I'm pretty loyal to Snapchat, but some of the discoverability things, you know, it's tough when you, when you spend the same amount of time on one platform as the other and one platform you get, you can get hundreds and hundreds of views on something that's, you know, on the other platform, you might get 50 or you might get a hundred. And so, you know, but on the other hand, that could be fool's gold. I mean, you, you could be looking at, well, on Instagram, I'm getting noticed because I put in this hashtag or I put in this location tag. Uh, and on Snapchat, I can't do that. But are they really quality views? Are they really people that are interested? And, you know, my, my only thing is, is will they become interested? They might not be initially. Like yesterday, I did some, I did some, uh, some, I was testing with the location tags and I was doing some in Irvine, California. I was doing some in Newport Beach, California, and just trying to see, you know, how it plays out. And, and with some of it, I noticed I was getting California in general. I was getting looks for the search for California in general. And then the other thing I was doing was playing with the hashtags. I was doing, you know, a real estate hashtag. When I was talking about some real estate stuff, I was doing social media hashtag, which actually the social media hashtag was just, it just knocked it out of the ballpark in comparison to the, to the, to the real estate hashtag. But what I thought was interesting was, is that just that that functionality exists and your ability to reach all these people that you would like people that are just watching Newport beach stories. They, they might, they might not be thinking like I'm talking about real estate and social media, that might not be something they're thinking about at all, but because I talked about it, they might tune in like, oh, wow, that guy's local and he's talking about social media and real estate and how real estate agents can use drones to make their brand really pop. And that's something I, you know, this guy's talking about something I'm interested in. I'm, I'm going to find, you know, I found him. Where on Snapchat, it's like really tough. And, and I'm with you. It's, we talked about this before the show that it's very difficult. And you mentioned it uh, a minute ago that it's very difficult to grow an audience on Snapchat. I mean, you've really got to put in the time you're just no, there's no way to discover people on Snapchat unless your other people comment and forward like, hey, go watch my friend Pinky today. First of all, word of mouth is, is always going to be the biggest and best. So it don't is. even underestimate. I agree. It. Second of all, like it, it's very hard to grow a following on Snapchat because you actually have to try. Like I agree. There, it, it's not it's not run based off of <clears> hashtags. And you know what? Like the longer it takes, the more you have to try. The more authentic your audience is because they're there because they like you. Not because they liked a photo on a certain hashtag. Also, it's a lot easier to grow a following on Instagram because you have these Telegram groups and like, you know, all of this manually like authentic engagement, which I think maybe some of it they it is not. You know what I mean? Like for Snapchat, like it goes away in 24 hours for Instagram. It's there until you delete it. Like unless it's a story, you know what I mean? But you also have your feed to back up your story. Maybe they can check you out or something like that. Um, you have such a small time in Snapchat. So even if you gain one follower in Snapchat, like I'm happier doing that than gaining like 2000 people on Instagram, because I did that in a time span that they were interested enough in my story that's going to go away in a couple hours. And now they're going to stick around because they want to, right? Not because someone in a telegram group like said, like, all right, everyone posts now. Let's all like each other's stuff so we can all be seen and stuff like that. Like, I mean, like it helps, I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. I have a telegram group. Like I just created one, but at the same time, it's like, you got to try for Snapchat and yes, it would be a lot easier if you could do this or that and hashtags and, you know, target locations. But like people are missing the point of Snapchat. Snapchat is not to target a location. It's not to, you know, type in a hashtag and then only reach those people. Those people will come to you if you use Snapchat as a simple, creative, just authentic, like, platform it's not meant to only reach a certain group of people in like you know 
Nebraska or something like that. It's meant to reach everybody. And if you know what, on Snapchat, if you won't make it unless you're very authentic, you won't make it unless like you're relatable to everybody and not just like people who wear Uggs. Like, you're not targeting just that, like, if you're a shoe store and you're promoting Uggs or something, you're not just targeting that on Snapchat. You better make that account about shoes. Right. <laughs> Everybody relates to shoes. I mean, unless you hate shoes, then that person won't follow you. But, you know, I feel like people appreciate them, for example. But if you have a store, it's not about trying to, you know, go within a certain hashtag and reach all the people and then get them to, like, follow you for a follow back and follow for follow, blah, 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 blah. blah. Snapchat's the opposite of that. So, like, A, how can you compare the two in general? I'm not saying it's wrong of Instagram. I like Instagram. There's a permanent thing that I could put there until I delete it. Like, it has a news feed, like, a new, like your feed to, like, back everything up. Like, all my pictures are going to be there. Like, hey, you missed my story? Here's a, here's a picture, like, from something I did that day. You know what I mean? Like, that's always there. It's cool. It's a completely different platform. And, like, to think that you can't, engage but succeed on snapchat is the most naive ignorant thing if you don't like talking to people and you just want to throw information out you're also going to fail on snapchat absolutely so it depends on what you want to get out of it and if you don't want to work for it because it's not easier like some of the other you know the only reason why instagram is easier is because it's meant to be easier because it's meant for something else right it's meant to like target you know it, it lets you tar- so does facebook it lets you target like a certain location in the world it lets you you know do that so like when you think of it like that here's snapchat anyone in the world it's the world is one big thing your audience is it's one big thing no matter what and it, it, they can be from anywhere in the world and like sorry but you can't just talk to people who you know are really super into like swimsuits or coffees or something like that so like if that's your brand make it relatable to everybody just talk to everybody and that's the hardest part for people to understand that they're two completely different platforms so when you continuously compare the two, it's like it's like oil and well, like there's no point to it. Like they they both have to exist because they're two different things, they're two different outcomes. And I have two different audiences on both of them. <laughs> yeah, um, so. your your buddy uh, Eddie Kidd also he said Snapchat turns brands into people rather than faceless corporations. So. Here's my question. I know that brands post things in the discovery section where you can go in and you can look at like Time Magazine will have a story or, you know, Cosmopolitan has a feed or whatever. But do you ever find brands or businesses actually like with all the regular Joes using Snapchat where it's not paid content to Snapchat and they're just like, you know, you've decided you're going to follow this restaurant in your town and they're just like me or you or M Platco or Joe Wilson, where we all are in the regular feed. I'm not, I'm not talking about the discovery feed with all the corporations, but where you've actually found restaurants or a shoe store or whatever, that's actually using Snapchat like a person and promoting their business in a clever way. Have you, I've never seen that. On my Snapchat, actually. Um, not, not as many as there should be. No, not yet because they're all afraid to jump onto Snapchat because like you got to get out of them. Like I want, I want the businesses that are smaller, like brands and stuff, not like L'Oreal, whose sales actually like skyrocketed without them even trying, (laughs) Um, not from ads after people's whatever, but because of their stories. That's cool. Like, but um, like small brands and stuff, there's maybe one or two, like some of them, um, there's like a music store, I forget what it's called, but like when they do update, um, I'll never be able to go to that place. But at the same time, they make cool content. It's it's a cool it's a cool thing to watch. You know what I mean? It's like nothing to do with their store. It's just their brand, and everything's about music. Everybody can relate to it. And like, I went and checked out their Facebook, and they're in some state or whatever. For example, there's very few that actually have the balls to jump onto Snapchat and um, try it out and realize that like they. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's wide open, right? Because it's, it's like, this is their time to come in and do it. You just have to come in and do it, not correctly versus incorrectly, but you just have to come in and do it. No, use Snapchat for, for what it is. It's a creative platform. You're telling a story. You are always telling a story. You know what I mean? Starbucks actually has pretty cool stop motion. You know, like the bigger brands are getting it. They're not saying, come to Starbucks now, blah, blah, blah. They're saying like, Here's a really cool stop motion thing out of nowhere with music. 
Also, happy hour, for, uh, like frappuccinos are free or something like that from 2 to 4 p.m. like the next three months. Like, add that into there. Now everybody knows. But we watched this story because it was fun to watch. You know what I mean? Right. Like, they didn't constantly throw in your face this and that and this and that and this and that. Like, but the thing is, only only a select few of brands, and they're all already huge brands, get that. So Taco Bell, um, Starbucks, like, understood. There's not very many brands who get it. And, you know, like, the small business world, the mom and pop shops could dominate Snapchat if they just broke out of their, like, I'm scared bubble. Um, because the worst that's going to happen is that you're going to learn how to create a story. Yeah. How, how's that bad, you know? They're going to dominate it, and then they're going to cross-promote that audience and onto, like, their um, Facebook or Instagram or whatever their main platform is to actually, you know, get sales where the marketers all should be. Like, all these small businesses are listening to, like, marketers only because, like, for some reason, creators don't know what they're talking about when in reality you should be listening to both, you know? Like, well, you can't make money on Snapchat. Does that mean you can't boost your sales from Snapchat to another that shows like creativity, like that shows that you give a shit about your audience. That's what Snapchat's for, yeah. to prove to your people and customers and fans and followers that you do care. If you don't care, then don't go on Snapchat. But I'm pretty sure that if you have a business, you do care about your customers. So you would have no problem. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you it, let's say you had a let's say you had a, a, a little restaurant that specialized in, in, you know, nice, healthy food or something like that, you know, mom and pop type place. Why not have a snap your Snapchat code on every menu that says "Scan me to watch on Snapchat," right? And some, on a day, I'm starting to do that, even small. Yeah, having that decal in the window. I've seen it in the windows. I've never yeah. seen it on a menu. I've seen it, it on the window. On Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, and then the let's say let's say you're that restaurant it's and. Talking. So listen, their problem is this, guys. If you're a small <clears> business, I want to tell you one thing: you want the audience before you start creating. That's wrong. That's you got to do it yes. the other way around. You need to start creating cool stuff and then the audience comes to you. It's not like a new movie is out. We're not going to show you a preview of it. We're going to gather all the people, then we're going to maybe show you the preview of it and then like most of those people may not like the preview. You have to actually, you know, do something like a preview for a movie is going to attract all the people who well, want to see the movie. That's what I was going to say <laughs> with, with, with what I was going to say. Like if I had the, like a restaurant, let's say I made vegetable soup. I was going to do a soup of the day. It was going to be vegetable soup. The preview would be, maybe I would do a clever story where I'm taking them back in the kitchen. You know, that could be dangerous for some restaurants, right? Taking have, them in the kitchen. Talking vegetables with eyes. Maybe talking vegetable, vegetables with eyes, but you could, at a minimum, you could be saying, look at these beautiful uh, tomatoes that came in today and look at the celery and look at the potato. I mean, this stuff is gorgeous and that, show them. Pardon? Does that relate to everybody? If you say, look at this beautiful, crisp piece of celery. Well, if you, like, if, like I said, in my scenario, you have a health food type restaurant and you're cooking fresh every day and your, your crowd is people who want to eat fresh. That would totally appeal to them to see what was going into the food that they were maybe going to eat that day. It's like a preview. Yeah. Like you said, it's like, a you know, you see a preview to a movie. You're seeing a preview to a bowl of soup you might eat in a few hours that there, somebody somewhere else is cooking up while you're at your work. You're doing your exercise, whatever it is you're doing. Um, you're getting a preview. And like you did, said, if you add in some fun and maybe some eyeballs and maybe some of them are talking like, oh boy, so we're going to. You gotta draw, You have 10 seconds to draw someone in. After that 10 seconds, if they're still there, they'll continue to check you out and see what's happening. You got to, so, so that story that you just said, look at this, like, you know, all of these, like, delicious, fun, whatever. I would start that with a cute, funny little cartoon, whatever. There you I go. I would draw vegetables. Everybody likes cool, funny things. Right. You know what I mean? Or at least most people, like, blah, blah, blah. Then you can be like, hey, guys, what's up? I'm at this place, blah, blah, blah. Let me, I've never seen a piece of celery, like, this big. And this like perfect and blah, 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 blah. And that's what you get when you blah, blah, blah. But like more people are watching you if you try to at least relate to everybody before you only try and relate to the people right. that like that right. thing. You know what I mean? That's so, what I'm saying. Open your story with something cool and then continue. So another one of your, uh, I, I'm assuming it's one of your, um, one of your people from one of your pages, Margot Kelly. Do you know Margot Kelly? She says- Margo! She says, our hometown baseball team I work for uses Snap and does it so well to share the experience. And we recently got spectacles, and it's awesome how they will give the snaps to someone 
both fan and let's see, it says see more. Both fan and employee doing a promotion, game activity, and people get to see their point of view. Now they have something at the beginning and during games to use the filters and fun videos to promote it. So somebody's using it for promoting Little League, which maybe if my friend Ryan, who joined a little bit ago, I don't know if he's still with us, maybe he'll think about that. Uh, he's always trying to promote the Little League here in Irvine. But um, So somebody's using it to promote Little League. That's cool, right? You know what? I'm not in her location, but I would still watch those stories because it's a cool point of view. You don't even have to like baseball to have a cool perspective. That That's an example of dominating your brand. Yeah. That's an awesome thing that they're doing. If the spectacles were easier to use, you could put them on a child and have them bat and run bases with the spectacles on. But since you only get 10 yeah. seconds and you have to hit that little button, that's tough. Uh, you know what? Let's talk 30 about seconds. You got 30 seconds. Let's talk about spectacles. Do you use them? I do. I have them. I haven't used them as much as I uh, should, but oh, Margo, Margo clarified it was her minor. It was a minor league team in her town, not the little league. But you know what? It would translate to little league. You could it, do it. It in little doesn't league. even matter. It's a cool thing that that brand that you know they're doing. So, I mean, it's so entertaining for everybody. Did, I'm sorry. I, I was reading when you said. Do you use spectacles? I do sometimes. What do you think of um, the spectacles? Give me some thoughts on the spectacles. You can do very cool things with them. Um, I just, I haven't, you know, tested them out yet. I think the whole big thing is dying down a little bit until people really, really start using them. Um, trying to think, you, you know, how to be creative. Like, I'm, like I would want to put it on a dog and have the dog, like, point of view for, like, a hot second just because everybody loves dogs, you know, to be, like, funny or something like that. You can, um, oh, you can you know draw in circles and, like, have things swirl. Like, it's pretty cool. If you could put it on a dog when, like, you're walking your dog and you see another dog coming and you throw it on your dog and you know that they're going to sniff each other's butt. Uh, Perfect. You, you could get Perfect. the point of view from the dog. Wouldn't that be awful? <laughs> I mean, but it would be the, it would be content that people would love, wouldn't it? They would love it. It's, 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 it's horrific. Start talking in the background. Oh, it's horrific, but people would love that to see the dog's head just, like, going in for the kill. Um the, so spectacles, here's my thought on spectacles. Cause I got, I got a pair. I don't use them. I've had them. I do love using them when I use them. I just don't. Um, two things. Well, maybe, maybe one thing. Well, it, it's, it's that you can't, maybe this will happen. And okay. I'm going to back up. You made a point that when people start using spectacles, I think the current version of spectacles, that ship has either sailed or sunk, but it's gone. Like there's not really going to be new people just like, Oh my God, spectacles are so great. That, that ship has sailed. What I think is it hopefully Virtual Snapchat, reality. they do version two and they make it so that it's super easy to, maybe there's a USB plug on the glasses where you plug it in and you can plug it right into your phone and you zap your content without it having to do the, the, the air play or whatever they call it and send it through, uh, through Bluetooth or whatever. Because it makes it so difficult. You spend way too much time putting your content and moving it from the glasses onto the phone. If they could solve that one piece of that one right problem. On pardon? They go right onto the phone. I know that, but it they just, go, you got to wait. You got to wait. Let's say you take five minutes worth of snaps and, and then you sit down in the evening and you want to zap it all to your phone. It, it takes forever. Yeah. But it's their first thing. No other platform has come up with something cool like that. You know what I mean? I oh, think I that's agree. going to save Snapchat. They're, they're, it was their first thing, you know what I mean? I think it was an awesome idea, and I, I think they're looking into virtual reality type thing. Right. Things, which is really cool. And the thing that I think is also going to save Snapchat is they're going to keep updating stuff, but it's going to be physical things, like virtual reality and spectacles and stuff like that. That's a lot of what's going to keep, or at least a little bit, um, of what's going to keep Snapchat going. Because, um, like, despite, they might not have, like, the clickable hashtags and location and all that stuff, but they're going to have the things. You know, and they marketed those spectacles so well. They made us go, they made us market those spectacles for them. And that was like a huge craze. Everybody wanted spectacles. It was brilliant. They, well, like, I mean, I, I, I went to the first bot drop in Santa Monica, California. I dropped everything I was doing that day. Uh, Joel come, yeah. um, put it on Facebook or snap. He put it somewhere that, Hey, the bot has dropped. And so I, I sent a message to Joel come. I said, well, if I go, do you want a pair? And he said, well, sure, if you can get them. I went and stood in line all day and didn't get any. Um, the line was so long. And, and the, the, you know, Snapchat was, 
completely unprepared for what happened and they didn't have any rules in place. So people at the front of the line were buying five or 10 pairs and they, you know, when they realized they were running out of stock, they, they limited it to two pair. And then every time the bot dropped anywhere else, it was, there were limits um, unless there weren't. I mean, there were other times where they, they, the person wasn't really limiting, even though they were supposed to, but I got my, I got my pair from the second bot drop, which was in big Sur, California, a buddy of mine got them. But when did you get yours? Did you get one from a drop or did you get one from New York city yeah, from the store? I got mine from a brand that sent it to me. Um, oh, nice. Where's Chris Rob when I need them? I can't remember the brand. It's on Twitter somewhere. Um, no, but they sent those to me. Um, I've never been to like a bot drop, but not going to be worth like it wouldn't have been worth it for me because they sold out in like two seconds so um your buddy eddie kid says snapchat world lenses have already played with augmented reality spectacles could make that even better when they update <laughs> them and make them easier to buy and use so he's kind of saying what i said <laughs> i'm less worried about easy to buy because i think that the way snapchat did it like if they did version two and they made it as hard as version one I think it would renew the hype and it would be, I think that's fun. Like people want to go searching and have fun and, and, uh, and it's, yeah, they act, they made us be active, man. That's yeah. Another thing Snapchat. And as disappointed as I was to drop everything I was doing and spend my whole day driving back and forth in traffic to Santa Monica, it was a fun experience in a sense. And I stayed with it. Like I, the next day or the next week when they ended up in big Sur, you know, my friend, uh, Mike Resendez, he's Reezy resells on Snapchat uh, he lives near the the Big Sur drop, and uh, there, but there's no cell signal, and so, uh, but he could get texting, and so I was texting him, trying to guide him to where this thing was. Yeah. And when That's the phone fun. would work, we were on the phone. Right oh, and and you know, people were getting on planes from like Las Vegas and going to, uh, you know, up into Big Sur to to get them, right? That's insane. Yeah, well, they're going to be sold in stores now. That's the other thing, but. Cool. So Snapchat's here's what I want to do. I want to wind down the podcast, but I'll stay on for a few minutes after we close out the podcast and take any questions or comments that anybody might have. We still have some viewers on a few of the platforms. So if anybody wants to put out some comments, feel free to do that. Lindsay, uh, first of all, tell people where they can find you on social media uh, if they're interested in getting more pinky content. <laughs> um, on Snapchat, you can find me at pinky with three eyes. Um, Instagram, I'm lindsay.margolis. Um, Facebook, I'm Lindsay Margolis and I also have my pinky with three eyes page and Twitter. I am just at Lindsay Margolis. Sweet. Well, listen, thank you so much for being on the podcast and, um, it was a great pleasure to talk to you again. And I hope that, uh, Snapchat keeps rock and rolling. I'd love to see Snapchat do a few things that could really make it pop because I agree with you that it is a more genuine and a more relatable and it's just everything about it. Uh, truly trumps Instagram, except for, I think everybody's dazzled by the discoverability on Instagram and whether that's fool's gold or not, it's, I think it's, it's still yet to be told, but, um, thank you so much for being on the show and stick around and we'll see if anybody throws any comments out. I don't know that they will, because I think that we're on a, somewhat of a delay, but we'll see what happens here in a moment. But folks on the podcast, thank you for listening. Please like review and subscribe. Um, I do this show twice a week. And you can always look for new content with movers and shakers and social media and live video. Uh, it's fun stuff to talk about and learn about. And I hope that you stick with me for the journey. Please reach out to me at Todd.live. Uh, you can find me at Todd.live on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, Periscope. It's Todd Bergen, Twitter. It's Todd Bergen, but everywhere else, if you just search Todd.live, you're probably going to find me. It's not hard to do. Listen, folks, thank you as always for listening and stay productive. My friends. So, um, We've still got some people around, but nobody typed since I threw that out there. But there is a slight delay. I don't know, quite honestly, between the different platforms what the delay is. But um, is there anything you want to add? Do you, you know, anything coming up in your life that you're going to be working on, like a book or, uh, you know, maybe a how-to on Snapchat or the life and times yeah, of Lindsay on social? Snapchat. What is it? Yeah, I'm writing uh, guides, like Snapchat guides. Um, 
but I'm actually doing it in like an art way, like an artist, not just words. I use my Bitmoji for the whole thing, so I'm starting that series of guides. A series Snapchat. of guides. Now is I just want to get small businesses on it. Is it going to be written guides, or are you going to? You know, what? here's what I think you ought to do if you, or you might consider doing if if I may, and and if and if if you don't want my advice, please you can just punch the screen. And no, I'll, you. Oh, a video series. You know, your crowd That's loves cool. that your face and your voice, and they liked your humor. And if you had a, like, say, you had a 15 series, 15 video series of how to do Snapchat, and you know, you've got you on there and screenshots. That would be really cool. And that was gonna come right after my guide. <laughs> there you go. That would be awesome. Do you do any? Do you do any video editing outside of Snapchat on you know, like using ScreenFlow oh, yeah. or yeah? The other half of what I do is I edit videos for, for people who need video editing for YouTube or Facebook or my own stuff. So. Cool. Do you do any, uh, are you, do you have any speaking gigs coming up? Are you going to attend any conferences coming up? I know your buddy, our mutual buddy, Chris Strub goes to like everything he can go to. So, and I know you guys have hung out. I wanted me to go to Atlanta with him and I should have gone, but I actually, I just actually couldn't go. Like I had like things planned that week. I would love to go to a conference and get speaking gigs and stuff. That's, that's essentially what I kind of want to do. Um, so hopefully eventually. VidCon's coming up. I'm going to meet Chris at VidCon in Anaheim in, I think it's, I don't know if it's June. I think it's June. I think it's like two weeks, three weeks. I think it's June. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. I still got to get my tickets. I, I didn't get the level ticket that I wanted, and I emailed them to see if they would sell me a couple tickets on the side because I'm going to take my 13-year-old daughter and they're not getting back to me. So I'm going to have to buy the ticket that I didn't want, but whatever. <laughs> well, listen, it was a it was a great pleasure to have you on today. And, um, you know, I wish you the best and I hope to have you as a guest on the, in the future. And, of course, if you get your video series or your, your, your uh, tutorials put into play, feel free to contact me and we can have you back on to talk about it and, um, and you know, to promote it and that sort of a thing. Um, but in the meantime, you know, just keep rocking Snapchat and Instagram, of course. Um, I have a question as we close out. Do you, do you draw on Instagram like you do on Snapchat? Uh, they're completely different drawing tools. So I do draw, but it's, it's completely different and it's not as much, but. Is it any easier? I, I, I find Snapchat's drawing difficult. I know that you don't, and there's a lot of people, that, I mean, but you've also crafted your art and you figured out how to do it. I don't know I that like I that better. A lot better, yeah. I'm still figuring out how to uh, own the artistic side of Instagram and the stories, but I love that. I, I love that you can. I, do. I love that you can draw with emoji on Snapchat. I don't think Instagram has that. I'm, I'm sure they'll copy it later, but I love that you can pick an emoji and draw all over the screen with it. It's kind of a cool thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure Insta will do that too, but you know. Well, listen, thanks again for being on the show. I appreciate it, and I hope that everybody else did as well. Oh, we're getting some love on uh, on Facebook. I don't know who that is, but uh, maybe it's just some goodbye love. But we've got we've got five or six people on Facebook and a few others on Periscope and Instagram. But, um, you know, all good things have to come to an end. So, uh, uh, Lindsay, anything you want to tell the folks before we uh, tune out today? Um, I mean, just keep going. Just Keep creating things and stop worrying about what all the marketers are telling you. <laughs> get, get on Snapchat. Get on Snapchat. Yes, you know, play with yes. Snapchat. Have fun with it. Find Lindsay. Pinky. P-I-I-I. -I -I. Find me. Pinky I cubed. N-K-Y. Pinky. <laughs> all right, Lindsay. Listen, thanks so much. Hang in there, Lindsay, while I tune out and we'll, we'll chat here once I get everything turned off and we're not being recorded anymore. So just bear with me. Folks, thank you again for uh, enjoy, for uh, joining us on the program today. Bye. I love you all. So much.